Basically what we're going to be doing in this video is addressing the video that I released earlier today. So this is a direct follow up to that. So if you haven't watched that video, I recommend pausing this one, jumping over and watching that video instead. So um, I'm going to give you a quick second to do that. And let's get stuck into this specific video because Shox has, uh, has come to me directly through Instagram and they've first off said that they really liked the video and that they really happy with uh with the way that i reviewed the headphones that they appreciated the positives but also appreciated some of the uh some of the criticism and that they wanted to address some of that and i think now that they've done that and i appreciate the company doing that i think it's fair and reasonable to bring that uh feedback to you guys so the first thing that i raise as a, as an issue is the um base and the base quality so in the video i say something well exactly like this i'm also a bass guitarist and i find it very difficult to follow the bass guitar tracks because there just isn't any real bass presence and so what shocks has said is they call this uh, leakage problem, basically when the bass coming out of these headphones is too much and it creates a disturbance to the people around you. Um, essentially, because these sit outside of your ears rather than in ears, uh, the bass uh, has a tendency to become quite loud for people that surround you if they don't uh, try and minimize that. And they said with some of the cheaper bone induction headphones, you get quite a lot of this, again, what they call leakage, and that they've done some R&D to try and find the middle ground. And they stated that where they're at with their headphones, they believe it is the middle ground. And in the video, I do state that this isn't sort of a make or break problem for me, because to be honest, I think the music quality is quite good, but also I'm not primarily listening to music on these. Um, it's acceptable for music, but it's better for podcasts and radio and that kind of stuff. So it wasn't a deal breaker for me, but it's just something that I think you should be aware of. And I also really appreciate Shocks coming and giving me their rationale behind that and um, yeah, sort of making it clear why they believe that this is a good product for um, you know what it's supposed to do and what it's supposed to do is create that awareness while you're cycling and it does that and you know you could also make the argument that more bass might drown out some of those sounds that you really want to be hearing so it might actually negate the benefits of these headphones and their primary directive which is to allow you to be aware of your surroundings while you're listening to them so the other issue that i raised which was my bugbear was the proprietary charger that Shox has put on these headphones and the rationale that they give is waterproofing. Essentially, Shox has a couple of different models, and one of the models that my brother actually owns a pair of is the swimming headphones. These are essentially an MP3 player that you load music onto because Bluetooth doesn't work underwater, so you can't use your phone's Bluetooth to play music. Um, also, if you're doing 50 meter laps, it probably doesn't have a range of 50 meters anyway. So, what they've done is created a system where their proprietary charger is waterproof. Fair enough. Um, now, something in the EU is coming in and Shox has stated that from next year, because of a rule change that states that all tech needs to be, um, I can't remember the exact language, but basically users need to be able to repair tech themselves. Companies are having to change the way that their batteries work and iPhones are going to be affected because you can't access the battery yourself with an iPhone. You need special tools and even if you take it to certain people, it breaches the warranty if you open it up. Um, so the EU said this is not fair and they're taking steps to address that. And this has caused waves right through the entire tech industry because a lot of these companies sort of use uh, custom batteries that fit their device what this is going to do is essentially move everyone onto these similar kind of batteries because there's going to be a market to make a standardized battery to make it easy to replace. And that looks like it's going to be based around a USB-C. And so shocks, instead of 
putting in heaps of R&D into making their own proprietary charger work with their own batteries that they'll have to make at their own factory are going to be jumping onto some sort of standard USB-C, it seems. And so from next year, all Shox products will have the USB-C um, charging port. And they said this causes other problems, like how do you waterproof that? And I mean, it's obvious that some companies like for example apple even though it uses lightning not USB-C, but samsung and most phone companies now their phones are water resistant um i don't know how waterproof they are and shocks has said that it's causing them a few problems and that it's going to take a little bit of time to do that research um, so it may be that it would impact that swimming model uh, in the short term and hopefully they're able to fix that in the long term but uh yeah usb-c from next year and they did say that the open fit is usb-c already because i believe that charges in one of those uh carry cases and so you use usb to charge the carry case just like you do with a lot of the bluetooth headphones like with airpods or anything like that so they are aware of it and they are addressing it. And to them, they've sort of said, it's actually not ideal for us. We would have preferred to be able to stay on the uh, proprietary, but EU's making them change. You could argue that's both positive and negative, um, but I, I think that's a, a net positive and it's pushing some companies maybe to put that investment in, but I think that works for everyone, certainly works for the consumer in the, uh, in the long run. That's the follow-up and um, yeah. <sighs> Hopefully you enjoyed this little sequence and hopefully this was a little bit of a treat for you. Bye.